Folks, we have a caller now. It must be Christmas early because this is exactly what I asked for, a liberal. Uh, Mike from Weatherfield, Connecticut. Yeah. Mike, thanks for calling into the program tonight. Hi, how are you? Good. So you think we need to just get rid of guns altogether. Is that correct? Uh, well, that, no, I would not say that that's correct. Um, personally, I mean, I think we can all agree that uh, in the ideal world, uh, we all know that humans can't really handle the responsibility of uh, holding other people's lives in their hands. But, I mean, we don't well, live in the well, world. That's so. a very broad statement, though. Uh, I mean, I mean, don't you agree that uh, uh, a small amount of us, um, a, a large amount of us can handle that, but there's a small amount that can't. So well, well, there's always going that. to, yeah, but there's always going to be a small amount. amount. But, I yeah. mean, you, d you definitely can't label all Americans as irresponsible with weapons. Oh no, no, I'm not saying that. Okay, go on. I, I know I know plenty of reasonable gun owners. Okay. Responsible, I meant to say. Okay. And uh, no, I, I don't I, I don't support um, and I don't think it's realistic to ban all guns, especially in America. Mm hmm. Uh, but my opinion on this the the whole gun rights situation is um, you know. Let, I mean, like, you, you hear uh, on the radio shows and whatnot, all the hunters call in and whatnot, you, all the libs call in, all the hunters, and, and even some Republicans call in, and they all say, you know, uh, there's no need for um, mer uh, military-style weaponry, semi-automatic weaponry in America for civilians. Mm. And I, I, do you not agree with that? You don't agree with well, that, right? Well, military-style weapons... Um, now, you mean, like, machine guns, M16, stuff like that? Uh, yeah, and, I mean, even, like, the AR-15. Well, let me, let me tell you, uh, my view on this. Okay. I think, um, military-style weapons, uh, things like M16s, I think should not be completely banned, but, uh, be made, um, very difficult to obtain. Yeah, um, yeah. When you're talking about firearms, I don't think any new restrictions on firearms should be put in place. I don't think they should be made hard to get at all because we have statistics that show that other countries in the world that do that have their crime going up. Yeah. You understand that, right? Yeah. You can't argue with statistics. All right. Well, um, I, uh, we... For for those of you listening, uh, we got into a uh, me and me and Mike talked a little bit on Facebook the other day and uh, about uh, gun control. And Mike, you, if I remember correctly, you were saying that you just want bans or guns banned completely. No, I, I mean, I mean, have you changed your mind again, in the in past few days? Yeah, I mean, I've had times. I've been reading. I've been looking at uh, facts and whatnot. I mean. And in the first place, I, it was never really a realistic idea to ban all guns. It would never happen. Well, not only is it unrealistic, um, it would hurt us. Yeah, I agree. All right, so what do you think the solution to this uh, would be? I mean, President Obama, he wants to put make uh, firearms uh, more difficult to obtain. Do you agree with that? Uh, I... I, I um... The, the part that I think needs to be addressed mostly is uh, the so-called uh, gun show loophole, you know, where uh, there's certain ways that they get around uh, the background, the like the required background checks of buying guns. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that needs to be addressed for like for the most part because that's where you've heard the statistic that uh, an estimated 40% of guns are bought without background checks. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's where they cite uh, most of those gun buyings or gun purchases from is from uh, gun shows. All right. Well, then let's do let's do background checks. I mean, uh, I I don't really have a problem with that. Um, my problem mm -hmm. is when politicians in Washington, uh, President Obama included, want to severely crack down on guns across the board. Not only military style weapons, but uh, handguns yeah. too. That's where I mm -hmm. have the problem, and I know you you support President Obama on some things, but do you support him on his position on gun control? I mean, it's it's like like I said, it's uh, I'm, there's gun control. Even though it's uh, specific, it is still very broad. I mean, that sounds crazy, but 
I mean, there's lots of different aspects of uh, guns, lots of different kinds, lots of different ways you can go about uh, controlling them. Mm -hmm. And, um, no, I, d I mean, I don't support everything, but, like, certain, uh, certain guns, like the civilian versions of the M16, uh, you know, like the AR-15 and other semi-automatic weapons, um, I think that those only hold their place in a very small part of American society. I don't think that it should be... They are readily available, and, uh, I mean, there are the, uh, the steps you have to go through to get it, but, you know, um, I don't think that anyone really needs one. And I, I mean, I understand the argument for, uh, for handguns. Can I, I hold on, can I, we're, we're talking about military-style weapons here, right? Yeah. Okay, all right, go on. And, uh, I, but, like, as, as I go on, I understand the, uh, the argument for handguns, which is that they can be used for self-defense, mm -hmm. and um, I understand the argument for I I, I fully support um, leaving hunting rifles and shotguns in place, but mm -hmm. they're not changing anything on those because I mean in reality, how many mass shootings have occurred with hunting rifles? Mm -hmm. Like none, and uh, you know it's I I I don't think that there really is a need for a 30-round magazine for a semi-automatic weapon. I don't see its place in America. I mean, I can see the handguns, and I can see the, rif the hunting rifles and shotguns. And like uh, what um, Adam Lanza used, I mean, he used an AR-15 with 30-round magazines, semi-automatic rifle, and he had a, uh, a semi-automatic Sega 12-gauge shotgun, which is a military-grade shotgun. I don't see the place in America for that. Okay, well, that's why I think that if you take guns like that, military-style weapons, um, mm -hmm. I I mean, I wouldn't necessarily ban those completely um, because you still got uh -huh. people that like collecting those and stuff like that. I mean, it's yeah. a very, very small, uh, not, not too small amount of people, but some people in America do like collecting those military-style weapons. So for that reason... I would not get rid of those completely. You know, I wouldn't make those completely off limit to the off limits to the public. Yeah. But I would be uh, okay with doing background checks for those kinds of weapons and stuff like that. But uh, the problem I have, again, I can't stress this enough, is with the the simple handguns uh, that you carry around concealed for defense. Uh -huh. I don't think those should be um, taken away from us. I mean, we have the constitutional right um, to bear arms. Yeah, yeah, and I, I agree. I mean, obviously the, uh, the Constitution and uh, specifically in this case the Second Amendment, they apply a little bit differently. But I agree, we do have we do have that right. But the one, I mean, I don't support a handgun ban. But the thing is, it's like the thing that makes me question it is that handguns are used in too many of these murders, and they're, the thing is, is they're semi-automatic and they have. 10 to 15 round magazines, unless you buy an extended magazine, and uh, they're easily concealed. And I mean, that's good for personal defense, but it's also good for uh, the uh, shooter to have, too. Yeah. Which is let, let, me, let, me ask, let me ask you a question, because um, as you know, I, I actually don't know if you know this, but guns, handguns are used 80 times more each year for defense than they are for killing. Let me ask you a question. Um... My my dad actually is uh, considering um, getting a uh, a pistol permit. Um, uh -huh. Would you make it if you were in charge and you had complete uh -huh. say over the gun laws? Would you make it any more difficult for him to get a a a pistol uh, after the shooting than before? Uh, I mean, yeah, I think I would. I I would. Uh, you you have to. I'm not sure. I'm, Personally, I'm not sure how uh, background checks work. I don't know what steps they go through, but I was talking to a friend who lives in England, and as you know, they have pretty uh, tough gun laws over there. And uh, he was telling me that people are allowed to get guns in England, but they have to go through an extensive uh, background check. Uh, regard, like they have to use. I mean, they have to. Um, they have to know that you have gun safes in your house and that you'll keep the ammo and the gun separate. And, um, 
they go through an extensive, long, long background check. I don't know how. I, I, I honestly don't know the process of well, background checks in America. Well, Mike, you know, England's homicide rate is actually 16% higher than that of Switzerland, and Switzerland is one of the most peaceful places on Earth. Yeah. So, I mean, maybe making uh, firearms but, but, more difficult to obtain isn't the answer. But Switzerland is also one of the least diverse countries in the world. So what does that have to do with anything? You don't think that when cultures collide, there's uh, a certain level of violence involved? I think there's a direct relation uh, between how strict gun laws are and the amount of violence that goes on in that area. I mean, Switzerland has uh, the highest amount of firepower per capita. And like I said, they're one of the most peaceful nations in the world. They have one of the lowest crime rates. Yeah, but look, and on the contrary, the hold on, said, let me let me let me finish. On the contrary, yeah, okay. Australia, um, I mean, in uh, in actually 1996, I believe was the year they uh, really started cracking down on guns, and yeah. I mean they're they're seeing staggering statistics. I mean, assaults have gone up 8.6 percent since then. Armed robberies up 45 percent. I mean, the statistics are just um, on my side here. Uh, how many murders? Do they have compared to America there? I'm sorry, say that again? Do you know how many um, murders by gun they have? Who who has? Uh, Australia. Uh, I don't know that. Because I don't I know mean, the exact number, no. Okay, that, I, I just think that would be an interesting number to have because what was ours around uh, ten grand? Yeah, ours was That's around 10,000. I, I think it's 30 grand by guns in total. I mean that that's that's thirty thousand people annually that die by guns in America. Where are you getting these statistics? Because I I always thought that it was around ten thousand. That remember the picture we were having our little Facebook chat on there. Yeah. Well, regardless, even if it is thirty thousand, the fact of the matter is that uh, guns are used in defense two point five million times per year, and when you compare two point five million to thirty thousand. Getting rid of guns doesn't make sense. Do you, but do you think that in all those defense situations, the person would have led to a murder? They could have had the potential. I mean, you never know. I mean, I mean those, those situations doesn't state whether they're used in defense against home invasion, home robbery, uh, seeing someone pickpocket someone on the street. I mean... Well, does it really matter? They were used in defense. Even if they weren't going to be killed, they were still used to defend them, whether it be rape, uh, robbery, anything. They were still used in defense. But What does it really matter I mean, if the person it, was it going is, to be killed or not? To, it's hard to put a value on crime, but wouldn't you say that murder is worse than a robbery or an assault? Uh, yes. And, I mean... If you, if you, but, but mean, hold on, Mike. One, one minute, one minute. If you, what? one minute. Even if I was being robbed, even if I knew that the person wasn't going to kill me, I would still want a gun there to defend myself, because yeah. he could still do other things to me other than kill me. That's true. You know, I'm, I'm. I mean, I'm looking at the uh, defense aspect of it in general. That doesn't mean just yeah. defense from being killed. That means. Uh, defending yourself from anything else that the guy might do, mm -hmm. and defending your family as well, defending others. That, yeah, that, that's true. But uh, m my question is, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not trying to argue this with you. I just, you know, I'd like to have a conversation about it. Uh, mm -hmm. Is is a uh, a significant decrease in gun murder worth the trade for a, uh, an increase in assaults and robberies? I mean, it sounds awful. You should never try to value a crime, but wait, hold on, hold on. Say that again. I'm just, I just, I'm just trying to understand. Say that one more time. I, I'm saying that looking at statistics, when gun laws are um, better enforced and changed to be stricter, it's uh, gun murder and murder in general goes, gun murder goes down, and other crimes go up. But wouldn't you rather have well, less gun murder, murder doesn't necessarily go down. Gun murder? If, if gun murder doesn't necessarily go down if you ban guns. I, you, I, I didn't say if you ban guns. I said if you made it stricter. Well, yeah, I know, I mean, but, you, you but saw, it doesn't necessarily go down, though. Then, uh, you, saw the, you saw the numbers. I mean, it's like 
even, um, I mean, the United Kingdom is what? At, like, 10 annually by handgun? Yeah, but, Mike... And, and we're at 10,000? But banning, or making guns more difficult to get isn't going to stop people who are insane from getting them. Uh, that's true, but I don't... But. Look at Prohibition. Look at, what happened in Prohibition? At, we made alcohol illegal, and people still got that. Drugs are illegal. Marijuana, heroin, people still got their hands on that. What happens when you make gun laws more strict is you disarm uh, the good people, the law-abiding citizens, and you arm the bad people. Okay, the the gun law, the gun changes that the the changes to gun laws that I would support, like I said, would be to uh, limit. Um, rifle magazine size and to eliminate or make harder to get semi-automatic rifles and shotguns and fully automatic pistols and machine pistols. It's, um, I'd like to see how many times like an AR-15 is used in defense. All right, but can we, can we both agree on the fact that we wouldn't, even after the shooting, make handguns and pistols for defense any more difficult to obtain? Uh, you know, I'm I'm on the fence on that one. I I, I honestly don't know because uh, well, it's my job to yes, get you off the fence. Yes. Well, I mean, yes, they are used for defense. At, what was the number you said? Two point five million. Two point five million annually. times each year. Yes. Yes, but they're also. I mean, a gun is built to kill someone. It's especially a handgun. It's um, ten to fifteen round magazine, semi-automatic, and easily concealable. Yeah. Okay. And and the thing is, I mean, compared to other small arms weapons, like, I mean, not like other common murder weapons, knives and and uh, whatnot. Uh, it's it's so much easier to kill someone at the you know at the drop of a hat with a gun than it is with something else. Let and me. That, that makes me more nervous because, I mean, we do have a generally stressed out society. We do have uh, generally every society has temperamental people and. Uh, I think that gun handguns are just, you know, they're scary because they're too easy of a kill. Mm -hmm. Let me let me um offer you a solution here. What if instead of making firearms uh more difficult to obtain, what if we just increased security in our school systems? Um my my only problem with that is the tax. I mean, I, I obviously we need to um do that, but like you know that the right screams about taxes, and uh, that would be a huge tax increase. Listen, Mike, I'm, I'm going to say something I, th I think you probably never would have thought you'd hear me say. In this situation, if it means protecting our students uh, in the yeah. school systems uh, by increasing security, even if that means a little bit more in taxes, I would be okay with that because I think the lives of our students are much more uh, important than... Um, yeah than taxes. Yeah, and but the other the other thing is about the uh increased security is I mean, look at where we've had shootings recently. We have shootings at malls, we have shootings at movie theaters, in schools, in colleges. If you start increasing security there, uh think about it. Movie ticket prices go up, um uh, mall prices and all the stores in them go up. Uh I mean it's an it'd be it has to be an all around public security increase. And uh, it means college tuition goes up, and uh, it goes prices go up everywhere, and also taxes go up. Well, I th I still think it's a uh, more reasonable solution than making firearms more difficult to obtain. Mike, I gotta run. It was a great, great talking to you. It's always a pleasure. All right, thank you, Jason. No problem. Factor Talk Radio.